So I want to talk to you about sand mining and why sand mining is an issue. It's a little known issue and when I started work on it in 2002, it was not known at all. But for me, it was very personal because I have a house which I grew up on the beach in Alibag in Kihim. And suddenly we found sand mining happening in front of our house. Trees started falling down and the beach became almost 10 foot lower than it used to be. You could see rocks out there where there used to be sandy beach. So it was very personal to me and I started making complaints. But unfortunately, nobody listened to me. And I found that when I tried to make complaints, in fact, I received threats. So I had to make a decision whether I let go or I keep it up. And I decided to keep making complaints and I was attacked. So once I was attacked, I was told that there are very important people working on this. Don't mess with them. And I was beaten up. I was in hospital. My hand was paralyzed. So it made me even more determined that I have to do something because I had thought it's a local issue. It's a very small thing. I don't know if it's really important. But, and I had small children. I, I lived in Mumbai. I didn't even live there year round. But I nevertheless felt that I have to do it, so I did it, and I uh, started gathering data. I found out from the police that, in fact, they had done various checks, and they had made a report that who was involved in the sand mining. And they had a complete list of all the people, many of whom were politicians across party lines. So they had this list, but nobody did anything. The various people complained but nobody did anything because they were scared. And so I gathered all this data. I took it to court. I filed a public interest litigation. I was very lucky that I found a lawyer because I knew nothing about the law. I knew nothing about how to proceed. But I found this lawyer who agreed to help me. And we filed litigation. Um, in the process of filing the litigation, uh, we got an order that sand mining in coastal areas should stop. And the reason for this is that apart from the fact that the beaches were dropping and uh, rocks were being exposed. We were, there was also a lot of saline water which was going into the groundwater table and people were losing farmlands, losing lands and nobody was doing anything. So we got an order that this should not be allowed. And after getting the order, because once you go to court, people start knowing that you're working on this issue. Uh, some people called me and said, you may have got an order, but sand mining is happening. We have been complaining for years. And they said that in Mahad, they had actually predicted that there's going to be a landslide because of so much sand mining. And there was a landslide and people died, but still nobody bothered. And then the villagers got together and held a morcha. They stopped some trucks. They uh, didn't eat for a, few, for a little while, but nobody was really worried. So I went there and we found, we took the first photographs of illegal sand mining, which were possibly publicly av available. Those photographs, because they were so explosive, I think the guys that who were mining sand came to know about it and they followed us through the ghats. We had this very long drive through a very lonely ghat. I was driving and I was thinking, I can't believe that I'm here, I'm doing this. It looks like something you watch in a movie. Once we got through the Lonely Ghat, we got onto the main road. There was a bridge. There was a tempo parked there, a truck. And when I tried to overtake him, suddenly they came and they banged into us, uh, tried to make us drop down into the river below the bridge, 100 feet below. The car was completely ruined. We went to the police station. The next day, we went to court, and we were told that you should not have been there because uh, it's a private place. And the court said that a public road can never be a private place. And this action is an illegal action. So the fact that the police were covering up for it was itself pretty shocking. Uh, after this event, I, be I became even more determined. Uh, I went and people started calling me and telling me about it. And people gave me a lot of anonymous tips. Uh, many of them were anonymous because people were scared. And I was scared too to go there, but ultimately somehow some, I made contact with some people and I went to a site. And what I saw there really shocked me because here was this sand mining site. People were working under terrible situations. They were diving down 40 feet or more into this river, which was so dirty that I wouldn't put my foot in it without worrying about infection. They had no safety rope. They had nothing to help them. Many of them died, they said. 
because they were when they went down there was a strong current and if there was a current they would just get washed away or they would get infections and the most pitiful sight of all was the fact that it is right within city limits that it's happening in full open view in broad daylight to build buildings which we all live in it's right there the buildings are in the background the sand mining is happening here but we don't see it we only know that sand is needed for construction for building for growth for gdp growth but we don't realize that this gdp growth is at the cost of something which is not a replenishable material it's not coming back so we took this issue after this to the un the un had a convention of biodiversity in hyderabad in 2012 and we did a side event there and at this side event i was very very surprised to find that the un which says that coastal issues are one of the top priority issues for them coastal biodiversity coastal issues sea rise climate change all this did not have a single paper on sand mining and the un after we presented this to them then actually took it on and did some studies and now they have come out with an advisory against sand mining all over the world because sand all over the world is not a replenishable material but is being used as though it has no end after that i met dennis delastrack who is a documentary filmmaker he made a film called sand wars and sand wars was shown all over the world it won numerous international awards he also filmed in india near mumbai and he came with us and buried himself on the sand in juhu beach because the sand mining is happening in such broad daylight i believe that it cannot happen unless there's a mafia and what is a mafia a mafia is an Ill somebody carrying out an illegal activity who is not afraid to use violence and who's protected because of his links with administration with politicians with government so this is a mafia and the sand mafia is very very powerful in india some believe that it is the most powerful criminal organization in india and also that because of the extent of sand which is required for almost everything whether it's building infrastructure roads buildings computers glass we are at great risk so we have come out with alternatives to sand as per official government policy unfortunately the only alternative proposed right now by the government is crushed stone which involves breaking down mountains we need to think of recycling materials we have a garbage dump in mumbai which is creating a huge environmental issues on its own all of us need to contribute these are major issues which are going to if we look at only short term growth we are going to have serious problems in the long term we need to look at our long term survival sustainability to leave a better world for our children and all of us can get involved we don't need anything we accept our own passion if we have our own passion if we have conviction we don't need money avas foundation is an unfunded ngo because i believe when you're doing something worth uh, supporting professionals support you they support you lawyers um, other professionals they support you on their own and all of you can do it you do, you don't need to worry about whether it's a known issue and unknown issue take an issue which you feel strongly about and be remembered for good